Hi traders, uh, let's just go through the charts today. I have to say, I've not had a very good day today, and yes, yeah, so I must confess, right out in the open because uh, I took a decent slice of that move and tried to buy uh, support down here and tried to buy support on, on a couple of times and it just failed. All the time it was just eking its way down. I think what's frustrated me is the fact that what we've basically got is a repeat of Friday. Now it started okay, but then we hit resistance, failed, uh, and a lot of the big money's got short and run it down. And that's pretty much what's happened today. Uh, I guess I got you know the decent close up there, a very very even engulfed all this price action, but you know they just hour after hour they just eked it down, eked it down and and um, I, I misread it, didn't anticipate it and uh, was so busy trying to buy support missed the fact that um, you know, we were just selling off so I mean, if you look at the 5 minute chart you can see that um, I mean, it was quite, it's a very slow burn very slow grind to the downside um, punctuated by what looks as if um, was was holding a support with just tiny little reversal bars in here. Um, yeah, so when we probed, when we, we dropped, probed resistance and dropped, but unfortunately I missed it. So um, gave back some profits on what was a good day and the pound yen. Hasn't dropped quite severely, but um, yeah, that was a great move in the uh, euro session. And you know, it, then then pullbacks got bought, and then we just ran out of steam, broke down, and that just just drifted lower. So um, not a great day for me. The Dow. Uh, opened up okay, hit 14,000 and is now just, just drifting. Well, I would, well that, that's expected. But this is what is a little confusing because the euro held up really well all the time the pound was selling. This was this is the euro session. This is what I expected from the pound. And we just didn't get it. Uh, 135 got bought, we went up to 136. And a couple of little spikes, and now we are drifting down. I have shorted up here just to see if I can get some momentum going. If because if we can break this level here, maybe we can come right back down to support. So perhaps I'm on the right side of the market with this one. But um, th this is what threw me. To some, you know, I'm using these as indicators. The Dow and the even the oil is not too bad today. Uh, very thin and very small moves, but everything held up. And then you look at the pound, and it's just tanked over a very, very long period of time. Uh, you know, the first reversal bar was 9:30 UK time, and here we are getting in for six o'clock, and we are still just drifting lower. So. As you can probably tell, a little frustrated, but um, that's the name of the game. Just didn't expect that. Right, let's look at dailies. Let's start off with the pound US. And let's see what they. Obviously, we, you know it's only quarter to six UK time, quarter to lunch time US time. So there's plenty of. Um, Time left. And you can see, you know, this is a, this is a, this is what confusing. This is a stopping bar. You know, I had that sell on Friday, but that's a stopping bar that closed up higher than I think those Tuesdays and Wednesdays bars. So, but yeah, you know, we've just crashed into that 158, and 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 we dumped it. So uh, tomorrow, uh, 157 is a short. And if we're coming down to this weekly. 15570 area. Uh, we need to get short at. I'll set an alarm on that. 
that level there and that is is it swing tradable? Let's have a look. How much support is down there? Right, at this rate, if you put the fibs on the whole lot, I said well, we've come out of the fib zone. We've stayed in the fib zone on Monday, and then we just completely they pulled the plug on it today. So uh, yeah, we could. Who knows? We could be coming right down to one five three. Who knows? It, it is swing tradable. I'm having broken that key support now, then we just need to get very short. And pound yen. That's a slightly higher close, unless obviously there's a fair amount of time to go before the Asians. Uh, if the Asians come in and buy it at 10 o'clock, or, or just, or even run it down, even, even break 155 then obviously we're going to end up with a different picture so we need to look at that carefully uh, late at night, at least 9 o'clock UK time if not 10 to see what that's going to do uh, so the Euro is sitting nicely sitting, and we have got uh, a reversal bar up there so, but the fact we're holding 135 is positive. So if we finish there, then a pullback to 13550 is a good place to get along. I think what's one of the things that's um, skewing these markets a little bit is that they are trying to sort out the um, budget, US budgets. So the market is moving on to and froing depending on what news comes out. Uh, we break this high today. We broke, break, and close above fourteen thousand. Then we are this trend line I've got here. Well, this top of this channel. Excuse me. Um, so we've risen above this trend line and and this this channel, and and we're holding. So we are extremely overbought. What happens here is is critical for the coming days and weeks close up here and start breaking higher then we are going to about 14,500 at least um, but we are overbought it's a question of what they want to do with it so let's wait and see what the market uh, what do I think is going to happen um, well judging by the way we're holding the channel at the moment I would suspect that we can hold here move sideways and break up so keep an eye out for that um, I don't think we looked at the pound yen. Yes, we have looked at the pound yen. Euro we looked at. Right, let's look at just to check on some of the others. Uh, Euro CAD is holding up. Aussie US uh, is a horrible chart. It's just absolutely trapped in a range. Uh, we've got. Uh, a higher low, but yeah, we're probably going to hang around the 140 area. We're just just trapped in that range, and we've spent uh, one, two, three, four, about seven or eight days in that range. Uh, if we can start to close above 104.50, then we can do something. We are seeing some strength here because if we look at the 60-minute chart. Uh, the hammerlite bar there a couple of hours ago, and we're breaking above that. So if that support 103.85 is going to hold, then we need to start getting pullbacks in this Aussie US, gaining a little bit of momentum down there. Uh, if we close above 104, then we need a pullback to something like 103.90. But uh, keep an eye on it. Dollar is well with a weak pound that's just sunk. 
We were just hovering above the 150, so if the Aussie's gonna, Aussie US is going to gain strength and the pound US is going to still remain weak, then that could hold up. Aussie CAD is uh, not tradable, that's just sitting on the fifth zone doing nothing there. And let's look at some more yen pairs. CAD yen. Well, that's that's a good move. Uh, pull back to 93 tomorrow. That that is uh, we close up there. That's a very nice chart. We're at R1 up there. That looks so clean. That looks as if I can do it. As opposed to this pound yen, which is has got a couple of topping tails on it. Swiss yen. That's clean as well. Uh, let's have a look at oil. Uh, it's not doing a whole heap. Well, the chart suggests it is doing a whole heap. We close above 96.78 today, and then that could well do something. Uh, but there's a lot of resistance up here. I would just leave it. I w I'm just steering clear of oil right now. Like I said before, these, these, this is a very thin, slow, very even grind up here, which is at times difficult to trade unless you're good at buying and holding the lows with good stops. So, switching now on to commodities. Um, beans are stuck at that gap area. Platinum's had a good move, that's had a grind up. Cocoa, now that, that's a good, so buy a 2222 is uh, a great buy in cocoa. That's a big move today. <coughs> Copper is just holding the highs. Coffee has had a good run. That's um, pausing for breath a little bit. And the gold, of course, is uh, ran right up in that resistance and sold off. So I would sit tight on the gold. Right, UK stocks. Uh, Excite is stationary at 100. Vodafone is picking up to 171. Um, so we, well, the UK market's closed here, so that's a good, that's a positive close for that one. Tesco is holding up. Sainsbury's is weak. Rolls Royce is doing well, but struggling with that high RSI. Premier Foods. That's a hammer. So we've come down, I've marked off this 85.60, which we've touched today and come off. So we break 91 tomorrow, that could be a good play. We are oversold. Uh, I would, I'm going to leave it one more day and see where that goes. We are coming off uh, a weekly S1 channel. Sideways, first group. Side uh, weak. Sentimin is holding the highs just. That for BT just about holding that support level. That's a bit of a stopping bar there. And hmm, I'd, I'd like to see a close above 270 on that one. BT is doing well. That's a nice chart on BT. BG has had a good day. A very very good day. I gapped it down, and 1070's got bought. So that they gapped it down to 1070 and swooped it up. Wow, volatile. Uh, it just shows you, you need good stops, or you need to beat your screens to watch the 60 minute charts. Um, Hargreaves, like wow, that's had a, that is definitely back in play. That's a big move. Must have results out. Cable and wireless holding up the highs. Agreco a little weak. Tullo doing okay. US stocks, quick look at these. Uh, a lot of blue, very li very little red on my list. Uh, Nvidia that is back in play. We close up here today. Then 12:30 is a good price. If you can get back into NVIDIA, there is a 
a daily tourney MA at the high up here, so be careful, but uh, I will go for it. Goldman's. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Facebook holding, Chesapeake holding up, Apple. Phew, really struggling. It's just about clinging on. Okay, let's leave it there. And I um, hope you'll join me in the Skype room and see you at the next update.